So Andrew, thank you very much for joining Energy Live News. I would like to start with uh, the connection, the relationship, the link between the crypto mining and the energy sector. Uh, of course, uh, we live in a period of uh, deep crisis in the energy markets because of uh, gas prices. I am just uh, wondering if uh, the crypto mining uh, activities can help the energy sector and vice versa. If uh, the energy uh, markets and renewables uh, can help uh, the crypto mining activities to become more sustainable. Yeah, it, thank you for the question and thank you for having me on. Um, it's, a, it's a very good question. And I think the answer is absolutely. When you look at what is likely to happen through the development of crypto mining as an industry over the coming decade or two, uh, our view is certainly that it will be a, of significant benefit to the energy sector and to the stability and ability to maintain our grids. Um, these, these, uh, this activity basically works as a, as a really effective tool for power producers and for grid operators to better manage their load uh, in a more profitable way than what they're doing right now. And so DPO, uh, my company, we work with the energy sector as an ally rather than as a, a, a counterparty. Instead of buying their energy from them, we show them how to make use of crypto mining for their own benefit as a power producer or for their own benefit as a grid operator and show them that the ability to turn this load on and off uh, at will provides a valuable demand response mechanism. Uh, it can work very much like a reverse peaker plant uh, in many ways. And so the ability for this technology and this activity to create new green energy assets by making developments more profitable uh, and more likely to be developed it is one way that it will help. And then certainly with the management of grids itself uh, and, and the flow of energy um, between the generation and the end user uh, can be better managed by crypto mining. There are many out there that they wonder how uh, the crypto mining can be sustainable because, uh, you know, there are so many reports already published. I have uh, seen one report claiming that one Bitcoin transaction uh, could power a typical American home for six weeks. Other uh, research uh, have found that over the last uh, 12 months, Bitcoin transactions used roughly 123 terabytes per hour, costing uh, 11 billion and producing 85 megatons of carbon dioxide. So, you know, there are so many uh, skeptics out there uh, that they are saying that probably crypto mining cannot be sustainable or as sustainable as uh, it wants to be. What's your take on that? Yeah, look, I mean, those are those are a lot of, you know, well-intentioned studies, I think. And I, I believe that people have a certain motive when they're doing a calculation like that, and they sort of intend to come up with an answer often. So I think there's, again, there's what has been done over the last decade. There is a matter of what is being done today. And then there's the matter of what is likely to be done in the coming decades. And I think that looking at it through the lens of what is likely to come is very important with regard to making good decisions about what should be done with energy policy. And so while this activity does consume a lot of energy, uh, it, there is a huge element of crypto mining that is green. It's, it's often driven off of hydro sources. It's often driven off of um, relatively green sources. There's, there's plenty of crypto miners using wind, Uh, we're working with a number of clients to develop uh, solar powered crypto mining uh, facilities today, integrating them with battery storage and ultimately helping developers of new green energy build more of it. Uh, if you can build a renewable energy project with a vertically integrated crypto mine as part of the planning and development stage uh, all through the, the planning process, You can come up with a project that will work when it otherwise might not have. And so while, yes, this, this activity does consume energy, it can actually aid new energy development. And I think it's also important to, to make a distinction. A lot of people say this is wasteful. It's wasted. I, I mean, in, in my opinion, that's sort of a subjective answer because waste is a matter of opinion on whether it has value or not. What you're doing with regard to this activity is securing a computer network, a global decentralized computer network that has never existed in human history. 
It allows the direct transaction of value between individuals without a banking system, without intermediaries, and without anyone telling you you can or cannot do it. That has a lot of value. There's a huge number of major investors around the world who have bought Bitcoin, very smart guys that run hedge funds, because they understand that this network that has been created has an immense amount of value for humanity. And so the operation of these computers is far from wasteful. In fact, you are securing a global computer network. The creation of new Bitcoins is just the incentive mechanism to get people globally to keep their computers running and operating to secure that network. And so while you have statistics like that quoted about Bitcoin, I wonder if you can quote the same statistics about auto manufacturing or the creation of neckties or the manufacturing of dyes that were used to color the clothing that you're wearing. Everybody has a different opinion on what is useful and what is not. Some people might get angry that the Yankees play baseball at night and, and consume energy in the evening just to light their, their baseball game. It's all a matter of opinion. And so, so that society has placed a seemingly a large amount of value on this computer network and the ability to run it. And, and its use uh, as a tool for the energy sector is going to be also quite valuable there as well. So how sustainable is the current state of uh, crypto mining and how can renewables help Bitcoin achieve a carbon neutral industry? Well, look, more, more Bitcoin mines on solar, more Bitcoin mines on uh, wind assets that are curtailed, energy that is wasted, totally wasted. There's negative energy prices in places like Texas and, and, and all through the Midwest where there's people paying to get rid of their excess energy. And that is absolutely crazy. Uh, you, can, you can absorb that for yourself through an intelligently designed crypto mining process and not have to pay someone else to take it. And so if you are a wind or a solar producer, uh, suffering from negative energy prices or suffering from a lack of a, of, a, of a good PPA, or you don't have a PPA for your entire energy asset, crypto mining can be a tool that those renewable energy developers might deploy to help them make that project work. And so without crypto mining, you don't have the wind project. You don't have the solar project. With crypto mining, you can have either or both. So uh, as I can understand, uh, you suggest that uh, crypto mining can provide the uh, renewable energy uh, developers a new income stream, a, a new income stream. Is that right? Absolutely. And it's a very flexible income stream in that that power that's being used by the crypto miner or their own vertically integrated crypto mine can be that crypto mine can be turned off. And so when there's a weather event or when there's uh, transmission disruptions, that local crypto mining entity can be turned off. And that power that it had been consuming 100 megawatts here, 200 megawatts there can now go to supply a hospital or a middle school or a residence. They work like a reverse peaker plant. You overbuild your renewable assets. You build way more renewable energy than you need because you have crypto mining as an off taker that makes it very, very profitable. And then whenever you actually need that energy for something that society desperately needs in a, in, a, in a crisis, the crypto miner just turns off. And now that energy is available because you have built the energy generation assets that would not otherwise have been built. A few months ago, uh, the president of El Salvador uh, unveiled plans to build what he has called a Bitcoin city that will be fully powered by uh, geothermal energy harnessed uh, from a volcano. From your own experience, uh, do you feel that uh, this is a viable example for other parts in the world that could uh, rely on alternative renewable energy sources? Absolutely. Uh, geothermal is obviously an incredibly sustainable source of energy. Uh, there's countries all around the world that use it heavily. Iceland is one. There's an immense incentive to, to make use of uh, more geothermal. And again, you, know, you could drill uh, additional geothermal um, lines, set up more than you really need, and uh, overbuild them with crypto mining as the off-taker. And then if you ever actually do need that power to serve society in a different way, it's available because it's there, because you built it. Uh, we're talking with um, hydro developers around the world that have you know, excess hydro capacity. The, the grid in some developing markets, um, Africa, parts of Southeast Asia, uh, have uh, plenty of hydro power opportunity but no industry to use it. 
And so they can, it's hard to build a, a 20 megawatt hydroelectric facility if you don't have 20 megawatts of demand. What do you do with it? You have to build transmission to get it somewhere useful. On the other hand, you could build a 20 megawatt hydro asset, use the first you know, 10 of it for crypto mining and have 10 remaining for an industrial off taker. So you can provide the infrastructure, the energy infrastructure to locations that otherwise might not have warranted it because they have a supplemental off taker, a supplemental revenue stream of crypto mining. So again, it's an incredible tool for developers you know, in Africa where they can serve their population with, with new energy generation at a scale that makes sense because crypto mining is an appropriate off take to help them do it. On the opposite side, uh, of course, I'm not really sure if you have checked uh, recent reports uh, that uh, they claim that Kazakhstan's state electricity provider announced uh, it is cutting power supplies to uh, crypto miners. Um, why do you feel that this happened? Yeah, so that's, a, that's, that's happened all over the world in a number of different si situations. Uh, it's happened in Iran, it's happened in Venezuela, where generally where countries that have subsidized energy prices or electricity prices uh, attract crypto miners because they can set up and run their equipment on very cheap government subsidized energy and make a lot of money for themselves. Obviously, the government doesn't like this because they, they're not subsidizing that energy to make those private entities wealthy. They're subsidizing that energy for their population and to, to maintain a stable um, you know, living conditions for their, for their populace, for their constituents. And so they tolerate the crypto miners to some extent, but when it gets to the point of starting to cause brownouts or blackouts, and when there's you know, a weather event and the crypto miner is not choosing to act in the best interest of uh, others, perhaps, um, they, they, they keep mining um, and, and they're not allowing that energy to be used as it's needed for some emergency backup. And, you know, they're causing these issues. And so it's not surprising that the governments want to make sure that this is being done in an appropriate way. And that's why, you know, again, we, we talk to our customers uh, about, you know, rule of law jurisdictions that make sure that, one, you have a regulatory regime in place. You know, the United States, North America, Europe, um, have very you know, strict energy governance guidelines and regulatory overlays that you have to exist within. And, and it just so happens that crypto mining works well within those structures. And so for the most part, again, if you're doing this responsibly and you're doing it on the right way on uh, energy generation assets that are you know, at, a, at a fair market value, uh, as is being done across North America today, then again, it creates incentive to build more green energy assets. Right now, if, if Kazakhstan said, you know what, we, we could use this as an opportunity. We'll invite all the crypto miners that want to come here, as long as they each one of them build out an equivalent amount of, of, of solar power. If you want to set up you know, 50 megawatts of crypto mining in Kazakhstan, build 100 megawatts of solar. Andrew, my final question is, uh, do you feel optimistic that uh, we will reach a point that we will uh, talk about a 100% carbon neutral uh, global uh, crypto mining uh, industry. Uh, and when do you feel that this will happen? Absolutely. I, I absolutely believe that will happen. I don't know when. Uh, and I, I furthermore believe that not only will it be green energy, it will consume energy that otherwise wouldn't have been created or otherwise would not have had other value because it was stranded. And so it's not even that you're consuming energy that otherwise had a good use. A huge amount of the, the Bitcoin network will migrate ultimately to energy that is otherwise wasted. And so not only are you, you know, going to end up with a carbon neutral system, you're going to end up with a system that actually benefits uh, the, the rest of the power grid by making it more flexible, more responsive more um, resistant to, to weather events and other challenges. And, and ultimately, this is going to be a fantastic tool for the energy transition. I, I personally believe, and we at DPO professionally believe, that crypto mining, Bitcoin mining, is going to advance the energy transition in ways that people mostly don't understand today. When we look back in 10, 15, 20 years, it will be seemingly, in my opinion, quite obvious that crypto mining was a huge benefit in allowing the energy sector to better manage what it needs to do. Andrew, thank you very much for your time. It was really a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.